140. He lives. You ask me why. I know He lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. On that first verse, let's lift our voices tonight. Thank you so much for seeing you may be seated it's wonderful to see each of you here tonight and we're looking forward to a great time in God's house and again thank you for being here we're going to start off in a word of prayer and I uh, want you to pray for several requests that we got this afternoon I want you to be praying for a faithful uh, lady Judy Taylor um, her preacher husband passed away some years ago and uh, she is at uh, Johnson City Medical Center and ICU friends of Chad Nelson and Scotty Sizemore and uh, family friends for a long time but a faithful uh, soldier of the cross and so either praying for healing or heaven and so once you pray for Miss Judy Taylor if you would also we got um, word about Roy Jones this is Judy Martin's cousin is in ICU after a couple of strokes and uh, some fast-growing cancer, and so we're praying for Roy Jones as well. Uh, Miss Judy was here this morning, wanted us to make sure we prayed uh, for, uh, for him. And uh, then we also got, the, again this afternoon, Risa Wampler's son-in-law, Justin, who's been coming to church. Uh, he got taken to the emergency room this afternoon. I don't know all the details. We'll pray for Justin, and uh, we certainly have many to pray for. We're praying, of course, for Sarah Roten on her missions trip. Keep her in your prayers. The Lord would keep her safe and bless her. And I believe Emily leaves, Emily Roten leaves this uh, Thursday, I believe, uh, for the Philippines. So keep her in your prayers as well. So we've got many to pray for, but we're also praising the Lord for other things. We're praising the Lord, Miss Leslie Farmer's uh, scans came back uh, clear this week 
and uh, we're very, very grateful for that. And so I want you to keep her in your prayers. Other folks are taking treatments right now, but we're thankful for God's blessings in, uh, in these situations. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we'll ask him also to bless our service. Father, we are grateful to be back in your house. Lord, it's a wonderful, beautiful day that we get to experience even... Lord, the rain this afternoon, many of us were without power and shut some things down for a while. But Lord, we're just reminded of your goodness, how blessed we are. And I praise you, dear Lord. I pray for these good folks that uh, need, your, need your help, your touch. I pray for Judy Taylor, that uh, Lord, her organs are shutting down, many things going on right now. And I pray that you would just work in a special way there according to your perfect will. I pray for Roy Jones as well that, uh, Lord, you would just have your will and your way there. Pray for Sarah. You keep her safe over on that mission trip, and Emily as she uh, departs for her trip. And, uh, Lord, we pray for Justin over at the emergency room as well. We've got so many to pray for, but these are a few that we lift up to you. Now, Lord, we ask you for this service that you would bless our friends that have come our way. We're thankful for Brother Weaver. He's a wonderful, wonderful friend of our church and a true man of God. We're thankful for him, Miss Rita, being here. I pray that you bless them and the young people as they sing as well. And Lord, we'll just give you the glory. We want to step aside, dear Lord, and let you do in this service whatever you choose to do. Please bless us in a very special way, dear Lord, and we'll give you all the thanks for it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said amen. Thank you for being in church tonight. We've got a wonderful evening planned for you. And I'll introduce Brother Weaver here in just a little bit. But before that, uh, the, Redemption Trio, uh, the uh, Redemption Trio is a group from West Coast Baptist College out in Lancaster, California. And they're going to come sing two or three songs for us. I know they'll be a blessing. Why don't you all come on up this way? We don't know what church they were in this morning, but we trust they were in church somewhere. But they weren't in a church like this one. So you help them out. And uh, this, will, this will be their favorite church that they go to all summer. At least they'll say that until they get to one on Wednesday, I'm sure. So, Good evening. We're the Redemption Trio of West Coast Baptist College. My name is Jacqueline Mata. I'm a senior from Durham, North Carolina, and I'm studying secondary education. Good evening. My name is Joel Perry. I'm from Roswell, New Mexico, and I'm a junior studying evangelism. Hello. My name is Valerie Escalona. I'm from Reno Valley, California, and I'm a junior studying music education. And at the piano is Jenna Sabinski. She's from Erie, Pennsylvania, and she's a recent graduate of West Coast where she studied church ministries. <laughs> So I'll bless his name and his mercies are new every day. With all of my heart, soul, and strength, I will say, God is worthy, worthy of praise. Before the foundation of earth was laid, God was worthy of praise. When he spoke the word and the world was framed, God was worthy of praise. Through the ages, true and changeless, with all nations I proclaim, God is worthy, worthy of praise, worthy of glory, so I'll bless his name and his mercies are new every day. With all of my heart, soul, and strength, I will say, God is worthy, worthy of praise. When Calvary's blood made atonement for sin, God was worthy of praise. When the tomb was empty and death could not win, God was worthy of praise. I will honor my Redeemer and forever I'll proclaim. God is worthy, worthy of praise, worthy of glory, so I'll bless his name and his mercies are new every day. With all of my heart, soul, and strength, I will say, God is worthy, worthy of praise. Omnipotent and holy, He reigns upon His throne. Yet His great 
unending love claims me as his own. God is worthy, worthy of praise, worthy of glory, so I'll bless his name and his mercies are new every day. With all of my heart, soul, and strength, I will say, God is worthy, worthy of praise. With all of my heart, soul, and strength, I will say, God is worthy, worthy of praise. Shut 
Amen. Let's all stand. Number 435 in your hymn book, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. I'll be there. We can sing it tonight. again to see each of you tonight and um, many of you may not know you may be seated but uh, a few of you don't know uh, brother Toby Weaver but uh, he is a, a real friend to our church and not our church only but many churches and um, we're so thankful that he's the one that uh, keeps bringing uh, tour groups back over here and uh, we tell him that when he retires we may not let the next fella come in so he takes this one, uh, he, he, he gets to come see, I know they love California and it's all nice and every part's got its beauty, I understand that, but my pastor says the poor dog that won't wag its own tail, this is the best part of our country right here. And so Toby Weaver, all of them go different directions when they take these tour groups out, but he gets, he's the lucky duck every time and gets to come over here. And uh, so Brother Weaver, why don't you come up, and uh, he is a real friend to us, to me personally, but also to our church, and uh, we thank the Lord he's getting up around a little better than he did last year. Uh, last year had to use the handrail, I think, to get up, and uh, so he's doing good physically, and we thank the Lord. I'm going to ask him to just take a little time to share with you some resources. They're on a book table. There's some good music back there, some of which they sang tonight, I'm assuming, um, but then 
other CDs that are back there, and I know there's uh, probably some information on audio downloads. You can get it that way as well, and he'll also tell you about some good books. But Brother Weaver, thank you for being here. Share Pastor. with us, and then call the group up here when oh, you're well. done. Thank you, Pastor. It's a great joy to be back at Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church. My wife and I went to Tennessee Temple College back in uh, the 1800s, <laughs> just about, you know, and uh, back in the, in, in the 60s, the late 60s, and, and I'm from Virginia, and so I used to drive back and forth, and I would, would come through here, and I always, always prayed. I wish I could go to that church one time. I hear so much about the preacher over here and what's going on at Buffalo Ridge, and, and, uh, and finally, after, when I turned 85 years old, I was able to come. <laughs> And we love coming here. This is my wife, Rita. Would you please stand, honey? And uh, she and I have been married 52 years, and thank the Lord for that. And uh, we've been serving the Lord. I was thinking a while ago, I do love East Tennessee. My wife and I, back in the mid, back in the 70s, we served the Lord down in Athens, Tennessee, with Pastor Jack Scallions, and, and we just love East Tennessee. Of course, we went to college down at Chattanooga, and it's just good to be here. Good to see y'all, and I love this church, and we're honored to be here tonight. And do pray, do pray for us. We left Lancaster the morning after graduation, I think the 2nd or 3rd of May. We drove to El Paso. Then we drove down to Del Rio, down to uh, Eagle Pass, Texas, right on the border, all that business. Then we drove over to Divine, Texas, then over to Garland, Texas, then to, to, uh, to uh, De Quincey, Louisiana, then Tupelo, Mississippi, then Birmingham, and then somewhere else down in Georgia, several places in Georgia. And then we finally got to God's country, Rocky Top. Tennessee. Finally made it. In fact, this morning we were at another church uh, uh, over in Greenville, wonderful church over there. Um, and uh, I was going to the youth department, and this, this fellow was coming in, and he had, he had this handful of, of uh, muffins. And I said, hey, how's it going, buddy? He said, going good. You want a muffin? <laughs> and I said, no, I'm good. And he said, okay, buddy, you should have gotten one, buddy. And I said, man, I know I'm back in East Tennessee. Amen. And felt right at home. And so we have a number of graduates here. And of course, I love your preacher. I've known him for many, 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 many years. Of course, the farmers are dear friends of ours. And we appreciate this church. Y'all pray for us uh, out there on the West Coast. We're sure praying for you over, over here in East Tennessee. We're looking forward to If you have an interest in West Coast, we have an online program now. A lot of folks are taking care of that. And, and it's, it's good to see you, Nick. I heard Nick sang this morning. Sing good, can't he? I'll tell you what makes him really sing good is that girl that sings with him. So that was a good thing right there. And uh, good to see you, buddy. Buddy. Good to see you, buddy. <laughs> if you see me after church, I'll give you a muffin, okay? <laughs> we'll have a good time, man. Uh, but God's been so good to us, and, and our college is growing in spite, of, in spite of what you hear. Our church is growing in, in Southern California. And we're just like you. We're trying to do in California what you're doing right here in Gray. So let's pray for each other. Can I get an amen there? Because we're in this thing together. We're in the same boat together. Let's just row as hard as we can. I'll say more about that in a brief message in a moment. So if you're interested in the college, we're accredited and all that stuff. Uh, to talk to the Wakefields. To talk, to, uh, to talk to these other young people who are around here to go to have been out there. They're some of our finest, and we're so proud of them. And I'm glad they came in for a landing right here. Amen? So, you pray for us, we'll pray for you. Now, the resources. I think there are about eight or nine different CDs on the table. I enjoy West Coast music because the kids sing it with, they sing it with energy. And they sing it with all their heart. They don't mess with it. They just rear back and sing, you know. And I like that kind of singing. Uh, I sing by letter, open my mouth and let her fly, you know. But this, uh, here's the brand new CD. Young people sing on this one as well as our choir and, uh, and, and others. And Nick and Elizabeth are on here in different groups. And uh, this is a great CD. And th that one's $15, okay. It's brand spanking new. Then there are others, and so let's have a let's have a Gray Tennessee Buffalo Ridge Baptist sale on the others. The others are ten dollars a piece, or get four for twenty-five, and that's a real bargain. I love this one, the Heritage Quartet. I like good old gospel, Southern gospel music, don't you? And I like it when it's sung with class. And these young men from North Carolina sang and recorded this. It's sung with class. It's beautiful. I love the songs on here. Blessed be the name, power of the cross. He's still waiting by the well, the mercy tree. And just a great, great CD. And so pick those up, if you will. We take credit cards and cash and then the books. Real quick, graduation time is here. My brother-in-law, Dr. Mark Rasmussen, has written a wonderful little book, 101 Truths to Transfer on the Life of Joseph. As you know, Joseph was a teenager. 
And uh, he, was, he, was a, he was a great young person. He took a stand for the Lord. He did it with grit. He did it with grace, but he did it. Uh, he, was, he, was a, he was accused of all kind of slop. His brothers sold him into slavery. He was thrown into prison. But he became the prime minister of Egypt. Think about that for just a minute. And he, and he fell in love and favor with God and man. How did all that happen to a teenager? This book will help teenagers find that out. And perhaps some parents will want to read it as well. I've read it. It's helpful. When You Just Can't Get Over It is a wonderful book by my friend, Dr. Pastor uh, R.B. Willette. When You Just Can't Get Over It. Anybody ever been hurt, disappointed, made mad? Had a, had a bad experience, divorce, cancer, disappointed somebody, somebody disappointed you. All that stuff happens, you know. Well, how do, you, how do we react to that? How can we get assistance and help along with the Word of God? This book takes 12 biblical characters and explains how biblically they got through a tough time. And they did get over it spiritually. That's a very, very helpful book. It's been an encouragement to me along the way. We have a retired... Co- we have a retired airman in our, our college. He teaches for us, Randy Wells. He's written a devotional for men. It's, straight, it's a hard-hitting book, brethren. It's a good book for men, to, a good way to start your day off with the Lord, brother. And uh, Boots on the Ground. It's on the table. Uh, gentlemen, you'd, you'd appreciate that book a lot. will not you guys come on and get ready to sing? Take, we'll save just a moment. So, Then Mrs., Mrs. Chapel, our pastor's wife, is one of the best cooks I've ever been around, other than my wife. My wife is awesome, and she's... She's a pretty good cook, buddy. And she has written a recipe book uh, for, for ladies, and it's really good. I like to look at it just to start making my mouth water and stuff, you know. And so that's on the table for the ladies, as well as a couple of devotional books by Mrs. David Gibbs. This beautifully written. It, it's beautifully illustrated. It's a wonderful book for ladies just to read. And it's, she did a great job with that. And then, last but not least, because I'm 75 years old, I want to push my good friend Dr. Don Sisk. He's almost 89 years old. He's a great preacher, a man of God, still preaching. And he, he helps us at West Coast from time to time. He wrote a little book entitled Fourth Quarter. It has nothing to do with football, but everything to do with those of us who are in our fourth quarter. How to finish your course with joy. That's what I want to do. God help me to finish this thing with joy. I can't sing like that or play like that or preach like others, but man, I can have the joy thing. Amen. And those of us who are older, what young people need to see in us uh, in these days of, of craziness and everything we see around us, it seems to me like even the clowns are running the circuits, you know. And, but this is a great book, How to Finish Your Course with Joy. It's for seniors, and it's fourth quarter. He followed it up. Uh, in, his wife went to be with the Lord a couple of three years ago, and, and Virginia and Rita were very, very good friends. And, he, and Dr. Sis wrote this little book, Overtime, a personal testimony of God's grace. So encouraging. If you're 55 or older, I promise you these books will be a great blessing to you. I'm looking forward to preaching in a few moments. I never take it lightly. I'm praying and been praying that God would take a brief message and would hide some truth in our hearts that as we move forward for the Lord in Lancaster, California, in the high desert near Los Angeles, by the way, we're, we're going to plant some churches. Students are planting. We're going to plant some churches in Los Angeles. It's a mission field. We're going to plant some churches up and down California. We're going to do it. 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 You're going to hear about it. And do pray for us because we're moving by faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Listen to the young people. I'll come back and preach a brief message in just a moment. thousand prayers but still the answer hasn't come and a thousand hopes left broken have left you all but numb i can't begin to tell you why he's asking you to wait but here in the silence keep holding on to faith Cause the God I know can still move mountains. The God I know still calms the raging sea. He holds you safely in his arms and he won't let go. That's the God I know.
that he'd be with us when we're walking through the flames. So tell your heart to trust him in this moment.
of Judah who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every people and tribe, every nation and tongue, every nation and tongue, He has made us a kingdom and priests to God to reign with the Son. Is He worthy? Is He worthy of the blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is He worthy of this? of Ephesians, please. Chapter number 6, verse number 10. Ephesians chapter number 6, verse number 10, if you will, please. Because he's worthy, and he is worthy, amen, he's worthy, then I'm going to fight for him. Because he's worthy, I'm going to fight for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to fight for the local church. I'm going to fight for soul winning. I'm going to fight for the things that are right until God takes me home. The Apostle Paul thought the same way. He wrote in chapter 6, verse 10, in the book of Ephesians, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. About 20 years ago, we were on tour down in North Carolina. We got, we got into the church, and, and, and the pastor said, I'll be preaching. It was Sunday morning. I said, that's fine, pastor. And so he got up in that morning, and he was, a, he was a good man, a good man, and he, he, he said this. The Word of God reads, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against. And he said, this is what I'm preaching on today, the willies of the devil. The willies of the devil. And I mean, he reared back and he preached against the willies of the devil. And I don't know what the willies are, but man, they were good that day. I'm not preaching against the willies of the devil tonight, but I am going to say a few things about the wiles of the devil. I thank the Lord that I'm saved. I'm saved off of a bus route up in Lynchburg. And my mother and dad were divorced when I was 11. Daddy tried to do the best he could to raise my little brother and me, but we were hoodlums. We were mean. Mama was gone. Daddy was disabled from World War II. And Daddy had a hard time with my little brother and me. And, and, uh, but a, a preacher came along and, and loved my little brother and me. And we went to church. And, and, and I, I probably, because I was a bus kid, I probably got saved and baptized four or five times because I was a bus kid. The water was warm, and somebody would take us out to eat. Amen, brother, right there. <laughs> bus kid. I got that thing down. But as when I was in high school, my little brother and I, we, we were in so much trouble. We went to a revival at that particular church, and Oliver B. Green, remember him? Oliver B. Green, that old leather-lunged evangelist from Greenville, Greenville, South Carolina, take your Bibles. Ah. You know, man, I'm re- he just knew how to preach. And I got saved that night, saved, saved. And uh, I- I'll never get over it. And then uh, the youth pastor took me down to Tennessee Temple College and showed me the college. And I said, man, I can't go to college. I got kicked out of school twice and messed up. And he said, no, God will help you. And, and we went down there. And I thank the Lord, met Rita on a blind date. And we've been married for 52 years, and God's been good to me. And the one thing that I want to get across tonight is that we're in a fight. We are in a spiritual battle. And and there is a target on our back right now. So we can sit back and we can we can watch the world, we can watch CNN, we can watch Fox, we can we can do all that business and everything else and sit back and be and be fear mongers or we can fight. And I'm not talking about being militant and stupid. I'm talking about 
I'm talking about some things, and I'm going to give a couple of illustrations tonight that I think that will warm your heart and show you how we can fight the good warfare as we put on the whole armor of God. Every bit of the armor, because we need the armor, because the world, the flesh, the devil, everything seemingly is against us, but greater is he that is in us than, that, than he that is in the world. And so I, I, I think about this. I think about Paul talking to young Timothy in, in 2 Timothy chapter, uh, chapter 4. He, he, looks at, he looks at Timothy and he says, he said, Timothy, and he's talking to this young man, he said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. And there's one thing I want to say to these young people. If I'm, approaching, if I'm approaching eternity, I have fought a good fight. I'm not bragging or complaining. I'm just saying I fought a good fight. This man right here has fought a good fight. This man has fought a good fight. He's still alive. He's still swinging. And I'm not talking about being militant. I'm a fundamentalist. Okay, yay, you're a fundamentalist. I'm talking about a fundamentalist with a brain, with a spirit, with grace, with strength, with courage. And I want to I hammer away at it for about 10 minutes because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> okay. when, I, when, I think, when I think about this, I think about Moses. Man, I'm 75 years old, but if old, old Moses was 40 years leading those, those millions of people through the promised land, he's an 80-year-old spiritual leader, me too. If God will give me health, if God will give me strength, I want to be a, a leader, and I want to be a fighting leader. I, I, want to fight, I want to fight for my family. Don't mess with my wife. Don't mess with three, four people. Don't mess with my wife. Don't mess with Todd Weaver. Don't mess with Joey Weaver. And don't mess with my pastor. <laughs> Amen. Moses, Moses, I mean, that guy had a fighting heart. Joshua had to follow Moses. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Jericho, I mean, that guy, he was, he was a fighter. He was a fighter. Uh, I think about Gideon. Gideon was terrified. Uh, he was timid, but he fought on. He was, he was, a, he was a, a wheat thresher. He, he, he had a lawn business. <laughs> but he was called of God to do something miraculous, and God gave him the power to fight through this thing. I think of Elijah. He stood up and said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. That's a, that's a, that's a good attitude. Jeremiah, the weeping, the, the crybaby preacher. But nobody could stop him. Nobody. Nobody could stop the preacher with the heart. Jeremiah, he fought on. Paul, man, he taught Timothy. He said, now, Timothy, we're going to fight the good fight. And I like that. And, 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 fighting, and fighting the good fight means more than just being a Baptist or whatever. It means standing for righteousness and against evil. So how can I, how can I and how can you and I maintain in this crazy, crazy society and culture, how can we maintain a fighting heart? How can we do that? I'm going to give you several ways. Number one, stand clean before the Lord. It starts with, it starts with my heart. My heart has got to be clean. I've got to run from pornography. I've got to flee youthful lust. I've got to run from wicked TV. And if I don't do that, I'm going to become a victim to this stuff. I'm going to become a victim. And, and every man in here knows what I'm talking about. If you're a red-blooded blooded brother. And I'm telling, you, I'm, I'm telling you, brethren, we have got to fight this thing. We've got to fight it. Well, how do you do it, Toby? I run. Like a scalded dog. I run. They don't know what a scalded dog is in California, but y'all do, okay? A scalded dog. So we've got to stand clean before the Lord. Do you have a place where sometimes when you feel dirty, every once in a while there's a place way out in the desert about 13 miles uh, east, of, east, east of our college. I drive out there. It's called Saddleback Butte. And it, it hardly ever is anybody, it's a state park, hardly ever is anybody there, Pastor. But I'll go back there and I'll get up on those rocks and it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful part of the desert I've ever seen. The, the sun sets, the sun rises out there. And I'll go out there and I'll get cleaned up. I'll get cleaned up. Lord, you got to help me. I don't know how to answer this. I don't know what to do today. I've got a dilemma at the college. Uh, I, my, my, my boys are struggling a little bit. We have grandchildren. We have all that things. i got a bill I didn't expect. Uh, this, this happened, that happened. Does anybody else go through that kind of stuff? Then we need a place. We need a place where we go get clean. And it's just you and the Lord. And that's when the Lord knows, hey, you're in a fighting mood because you, you've, I've got to be right before I, I, I can do any, any of this. I, I don't want to stand up here and be a cotton-picking hypocrite. Number one, I've got to stand clean before the Lord. Number two, I've got to speak up for my faith. I, I love faith. Saving faith, 
living faith, faith for grace. I've got to speak up for my faith. My, my wife's a great blessing to me. And Pastor, thank you for putting us in a nice, beautiful hotel. I was coming down from the hotel, getting ready to go to the van, coming over to the church tonight. And Rita was down there talking to the, the clerk at the desk. And the guy's probably 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, and, and, and my little wife is standing there just, just witnessing to that guy. And it just warmed my heart. And the guy said, I'm an atheist. Well, maybe an agnostic, but she's trying. She's fighting for the faith. She's fighting for the faith. Uh, we stopped today at, uh, not Krispy Kreme, but Dunkin' Donuts. Thank the Lord for that. <laughs> we stop at every one of them. I, we know Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, I ought to buy a stock in that joint. And so uh, on the way over here from, from uh, Greenville, we stopped by the, the uh, Dunkin' Donuts thing, because uh, those girls love coffee, and we went in there and, 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 and gave people the gospel. And, and not shoving it down their throat and cramming it down their throat. But the Bible says, go ye. The, the Bible says, he that win the souls is wise. And so I thought, I need some wisdom. <laughs> I need a little wisdom. How do you get that? He that win his souls is wise. God honors that. And we've got to fight for it. And, and, and we've and we got to step up. We've got to step up with courage. Because we're, we're afraid of the world, the flesh. We've been, we've been intimidated so much that we're retreating. And I'm not in the mood to retreat. I'm not in the mood to back up. I'm, I'm in the mood to say, I'm born again. I'm saved. I have the joy of the Lord in my heart. I've got problems just like everybody else. Health problems, financial problems. We all have that stuff. Everybody in this room has that stuff. But if we keep going this way rather than that way, we're going to lose this thing, man. I ain't, and I'm not in the losing mood. I played, I played tennis with this guy, man, and they beat me. And... and, uh, and and th then I beat him, and he jumps over the net. And I, I mean, if I lose, I'm, I'm, I'll jump over the net if I win, but I'm going to jump over the net if I lose, man. So I've I got to speak. I, I've, I've got to stand clean. i got to stand clean. If I want to fight, i got to stand clean. First of all, it's, it, it begins with us finding that place with the Lord. Lord, I'm going to come on and get clean today. I'm going to be real honest with you. I'm scared. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm fretful. I have apprehensions. The, 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 the pressure of what's going on. Lord, I'm, I'm going to come to you today because I need you and I want, to, I, I want to fight for you. And he'll help you. Because he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He's not going to bail on you. I need to speak up for my faith, just like Rita did and the kids did today at the, at the, at the, at the donut joint. Number three, I need courage. I need courage. Joshua said over and over and over, fear not. Jesus said, fear not. 366 times in your Bible and in my Bible, in black and white, it says, fear not. One for every day of the year and one for leap year. Fear not. And the devil, devil wants to get you to fear. But faith can overcome fear. Faith to live this Christian life. Faith in, in, in spite of people. People will want to rob you of your joy. You mean you go down to that Buffalo Ridge? All they talk about is money down there. Well, stupid, how are you going to keep the lights on? Without talking about money. Well, how are you going to... How are you going to how, the, you, you've remodeled this. It's beautiful. How did you... I, I mean, and then p people will criticize. You mean you go down to that independent fundamental? Yeah, yeah, I do. You ought to come. Man, we got this, we got this pastor. We got this guy leads singing. And, 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 uh, and, and the Wakefields are down there. They got this beautiful baby. And everybody thanks the Lord. The baby looks like the mother instead of the dad. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> Hi, Becca. Nice to see you. Courage. Courage. Twelve spies. Two of them had courage. Joshua and Caleb. Uh, Weak hearts are fading away. We don't, need, we don't need folks at Lancaster Baptist and folks at Buffalo Ridge Baptist to have weak hearts. We need to have the heart of, of a warrior. A, a, a mama with the heart of a warrior where, where her, her kids know she prays and, 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 and she loves daddy even though daddy's like me. <laughs> daddy, you know, he's got his stuff. Rita and I have been married 52 years. We haven't talked about divorce or separation on three occasions. She's mentioned murder. But... Uh, <laughs> And a couple of those times I probably deserved it, you know. Uh, in between ministries, years ago, we were down in Florida. In between ministries, I took a job at Sears. Sears Roebuck. And I was a manager of the shoe department and the men's department in Brandon, Florida. In a brand new mall, in between ministries, waiting on the Lord to show the Lord to show us what to do. And, and worked with uh, eight different managers. And, man, it was crazy. And, and the associates, and, I mean, it was just retail. Retail stuff, retail. And I was, I was, Pastor, I was angry at the Lord for working at Sears rather than being in, in a church or a college. And I, and, I, and I would cry. 
I choke up. I said, Lord, I, I want to be in ministry, but the, we, it was just a little season. We had to do that. And, and uh, about the second week there, I pulled up in front of Sears in Brandon, Florida, in, in, uh, in Brandon, Florida, and the Lord said, why don't you pastor the, why don't you pastor the store? <laughs> I said, pardon me. And the Lord said, Sears Baptist Church, go pastor the store. I said, pastor the store? He said, yeah, go pastor the store. Take your Bible in there. Well, I'm the shoe department manager. I'm the men's department manager. The Lord said, get some, get some spiritual grit, Toby. And I said, okay. So I went home and got my Bible. I walk into Sears with my Bible. I'm the pastor of the Sears Baptist Church in Brandon, Florida. And God honored that. I began praying, praying for associates, praying for managers. Won some folks to the Lord. They, they came to Providence Baptist in Riverview, Florida. It's, it's amazing. Th this book scares the snot out of people. All of a sudden, all these cussing managers and all these cussing people in there. Hey, amen, brother. <laughs> we had a religious store. You know, and, and I treated it like a church. I, I said, okay, Melinda, I want you to stand at the door. And she was a University of Southern Florida uh, girl. And I said, when people come in, good morning, welcome to Sears. We're glad you're here today. And, and be friendly and be kind. And, 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 and th these kids start talking to me about the Lord. Toby, could you talk to us? Mr. Weaver, could you talk to us? Yeah. And people getting saved. I'm telling you, if you go to work tomorrow and have that kind of attitude, the, the job that's so hard to work at won't be so tough. And the people that are so tough to work for and work with won't be so hard, and you, but you've got to fight for it. Everybody okay so far? <laughs> Almost done. Well, you've got to stand, you stand clean. Woo! That's tough sometimes. I've got to speak up for my faith. I, I've, I've, I've got to have courage to do it. I've got to have, I've got to have determination. I've got to have determination. My wife and I have been traveling for 23 years. And uh, I only have 415 speeding tickets. Oh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We've been traveling for a long time, and, and God's been good to us and protected us, and churches like yours and others, and it's just a great, great, great blessing. We were the tour group a number of years ago. I thought about this this morning. And uh, it was a girls group. And one of the girls said, uh, Brother Weaver, can we eat at a truck stop today? I said, a truck stop? Yeah, can we eat at a truck stop? I said, a truck stop? Yeah, we've never eaten at a truck stop. I said, well, okay. Okay, we'll eat a truck stop for, for lunch, you know. So we pull into this truck stop, and there's 18 wheelers everywhere, you know. All these big old, all these big old truck drivers, you know. I mean, you know, I mean, it was whoppers. And so we go in there, and we're sitting there, you know, and we pray, and they bring the food, you know. And, and there were these two truckers sitting about from here, about where you are, brother. And many looked over, and they saw these, these clean, pure, godly girls, and they started talking trash talk. Some of it was pretty dirty. And, and Brother Wade really kept looking at me like, are you going to do something? And I said, uh-uh. The guy's a huge man. And, and she kept looking at me, and, 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 and I thought, if I don't do something, she will. And, and, I, and so I said, well, Lord, I'm going to go over there and talk to those guys. And those girls kept looking at me. Rita kept looking at me. I was scared half to death, man. Scared out of my mind. And so I, I swallowed real hard, and, and I walked over there, and I started singing my theme song, I'm coming home. <laughs> Coming home. And I walked over and, and I, said, I said, hey guys, my name is Toby. And that's my wife over there. And, and those four girls are from a Bible college. And I said, you, you, you guys are going over the top in your language. You, you, you shouldn't talk like that in front of those girls. I said, you shouldn't do that. I, I, I said, that's disrespectful. It's not even manly. And they stood up. And they kept standing up. And they kept standing up. And I said, oh my word. I'm, oh my, and I'm, I mean, they got these chains and beard and big old burly guys, you know, big old arms, and, 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 and I looked down, and I said, I'm serious. And the guy said, well, I'm sorry. I said, pardon me? <laughs> Would you say that again, please? And I said, well, tell the girls you're sorry. I said, well, if I get this far, maybe I'll get to second base. They apologized. We just need to fight. They told me, were you scared? I was petrified. Are you ever scared giving out a track? Yes, sir. You ever get nervous knocking on the door? Yes, sir. I do. I do. But if we don't fight, it ain't going to get done. And we got to do it. Now, what can we do then? What can we do? And I'm finished. I've got to be determined. I've got to be determined. I've got to be devoted. In, in Lancaster Baptist Church, 
in Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church, when people walk in here, they ought to sense an unusual joy. So when, the, when, when Brother Rogers gets up to sing, let her rip. Let her rip. I, I, I want a guy to the Lord out in California, the, one of the first guys I led to the Lord 20 years ago. It took me an hour to find the guy's house, and he wasn't home. I left him a note. His name was Sammy. I said, I said, Dear Sammy, my name is Toby. If you can come to church tomorrow, uh, I'll meet you by the fireplace. Next morning, this, this guy, 6'4", I mean, built like a rock. I mean, great big guy. He comes in. I'm standing by the, by the fireplace, and he said, Are you Toby? And I said, Maybe. I had a big old guy, you know. And, uh, and he said, My name is Sammy. I said, Oh, you came today. Good. And he got saved, got baptized. He became one of the ushers at church. But, and we went down there, and, and the song leader started singing, you know. And he was as monotone as they come, What can wash away my sin? And, and I looked up at him. He said, What? And I said, Nothing, man. That's cool. I'm, uh, so even if you're making a joyful noise, let it rip, brother. Let people see, hey, well, I got the joy of the Lord. Yeah, but I don't feel good. Well, most of the time, most of us don't feel pretty good, you know. But what, what can we do here? Shake hands. Be, be overly friendly. Hey, thank you for coming to church today. We're glad you're here. How did you hear about the church? Uh, look around. Uh, the, the, the folks visiting tonight probably look around. And just go out of your way. It's the way the, to build the church. It's the way to do it. And if you can take somebody for a coffee and pie tonight, you ought to do it. Be different. The only way we can make a difference is be different. We cannot be the old, the old, the old, old. I remember the good old days. We don't live in the good old days. We live in the, the good old, we live in the good old day today. And so today, God has given me today. Yesterday's gone. I might not have tomorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love the snot out of today. And I, I keep using that word. I'm sorry. I'm going to love the, I'm going to love what, whatever out of the day today. For, forgive me. I'm sorry. So that's how we're going to do it. We're going to fight. And we're not, we're not going to be militant, crazy, whatever. But we're going to be full of grace. I'm, 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 I'm going to love my wife. I'm going to run from sin. I'm, I'm going to take a stand. I'm going to take a stand at work, but I'm going to do it with grace. And I'm going to do it. And, I, and, I, and I've, I've, I've got to keep my heart and my mind clean. It's the only way we can fight. And we need to do this today because... Just any moment now, Jesus may come. He may come. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the Word of God. It's so plain and clear to me. It's so clear. And you teach us, Father, and, and you instruct us what to do and how to do it. May we do it. May we, may we, not, may we not be afraid of, of people and circumstances and things that come our way, but that we would walk by faith and not by sight. And I pray that you'd give us great grace in our church in Lancaster and great grace here at Buffalo Ridge. You've given us unusual, unusual worship places and pastors and people that we know and we love. And I pray that you'd help us not to retreat, but to lovingly move forward. Help us to do it with your power because you're able. You're our friend in Jesus' name. Pastor. Thank you so much, Brother Weaver. Let me just ask you if you'd settle on some of those thoughts that he had given tonight and really it could be summed up by saying he wanted he challenged us to live clean live pure live stand for the fight but do it personally do it in your church and do it at your work really your life can be compartmentalized fairly easily you do it personally you let that pour out to the people that you're around a lot and then you let, the pe let it pour out to the people who you're not around in such an intimate way, but that you're around at work and things. And I ask you to stand and fight and stay clean, just as Brother Weaver mentioned. Because this life, this Christian life, needs to be very, very real and very, very personal and very, very uh, outpouring from us into the world around us. Father, bless us now is our prayer. And I ask you to do a great work, and I pray and ask you to let people commit to you, dear Lord, to live. Make this thing real to them. May we not be uh, per spectators, but participators, dear Lord, and get in this thing. Flee youthful lust. Live for you. Stay clean and get in the fight. Get in the fight, I pray. Would you stand together as the instruments begin to play? If God's speaking to your heart tonight, I invite you to come. Somebody probably needs, needs to tell the Lord, Lord, I do need to get in the fight. I've been on the sidelines long enough. I didn't even know there was a fight going on. And he reiterated many times, he's not talking about fighting and un being unkind and being with, a, with an ugly spirit. 
about fighting. You'd fight for your family, men. Somebody was trying to hurt or break in or break, break somebody or something. You'd fight for that because it's so valuable to you. How to fight for our, our faith as well. Serve the Lord with vigor and fire. And live for God in all that we do. Would you come tonight? The altar is open for you. You like to come and pray and seek God's face about that or something. As they continue to play, if God's speaking to your heart, would you do business with Him? Perhaps you're here tonight and you're not sure that you're saved. Brother Weaver didn't specifically preach on that, but he mentioned it many, many times when he was a youth that he got to a place where he realized he needed to be saved. Maybe you're here tonight and you may be a church member, you may be a tender, but you now know that you, you know you need to be saved. If that's you tonight, Brother Daniel's right in front of the pulpit that was preached from tonight. Would you step out and come? Let somebody take a Bible and show you how you can be sure. Heaven's your home. Thank you. You can look this way. Well, I want to thank you for being in church tonight. Uh, the uh, trio and the piano player, thank you for being here with us. And uh, Brother Weaver, thank you for coming our way. It's always a joy to get to have him, and uh, we're a joy to have the college, of course, as well. And uh, this is um, a, a great group of young people, I'm sure. And so I certainly love the message. I learned tonight that we can love the snot out of somebody, beat the snot out of somebody, live the snot out of life, and run the snot out of whatever you're going to run for. It's helped me all over the place. So I get in trouble for my wife for saying that. She said, oh, John, that's so crude. But it must be orders from headquarters, I guess. So thank you for being with us, Brother Weaver. Thank you, Miss Weaver, for uh, coming. I'm going to ask the young people, you don't mind, to slip out. And Brother Weaver, you slip out to the table. And I know that Kyle is doing some things afterwards. But uh, you can spend some time in the lobby. Hopefully, you'll get some of the resources the books and CDs and things that will be a great blessing to you. And uh, I know that you will enjoy all of that. It's been a great place to be. Thank you for being in church. Um, we are looking forward to a great uh, prayer meeting this Wednesday night. Be praying for that meeting. If you're able to be here, we want to challenge you to be here. Uh, the youth department will be uh, meeting, the Patch the Pirate Clubs, all the things will be happening. And then we'll have Bible study in here at 7. If you're not able to be here, please pray for us that God would meet with us. And uh, I know that work schedules and different things come in. You just can't get here. I understand understand that, but when, even when that happens, uh, please try to remember to pray that God would meet with us because you never know who's going to come through those back doors. Somebody that's just lower, uh, lowest place in their life could come through those doors and this, that service on a Wednesday night might be just exactly what they need to help them make it through that valley that they're in. Or somebody unsaved just came to church. And that was the one time that they came. They didn't come for the revival meeting. They didn't come for the evangelistic meeting. They just came for a prayer meeting, but God met with them. So pray. When you can't be here on services, please pray for us. And speaking of services, one last announcement. Uh, the tent revival out on the Bristol Highway, 730 each night this week, uh, Monday through Friday. And if you're able to be there, uh, I know that it'll be a wonderful services. I wasn't able to go last week. I'll hopefully get over this week sometime. But I know they've been having great, great services and uh, challenge you to be over there and you have some good time together with the Lord, I'm sure. So thank you for being in church. God bless you. You're dismissed.